Hey guys, good morning. How are ya? It's Wednesday. It's hump day. See, I'm telling you, man, these weeks are just flying. We're already in the middle of the week. Where does the time go? Say hello. Say good morning as you pop on. So I know this broadcast is working okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I know this broadcast is working okay. All right. Say hello. Say good morning. I am waking up, easing into the day with my cup of coffee. Thank you for joining me here today. This is where we always meet up for a morning chit chat over coffee. And we talk about things about business, about growing our business. And it's nice to have a place to come to, right? Good morning, Naomi. How are you? Even my husband showed up this morning. <laughs> hey, Ote, I'm here, Shonda says. Sandy says, good morning, my creative peeps. Good morning, Jocelyn. She says, hey, hey, all. Brenda says, good morning, ladies. Uh, awesome. So um, I think it was, was it Debbie or Deborah. You guys might remember yesterday we were talking about, we were just talking in general. And I said, you know, ask me a question. And when I'm doing these lives, pop in questions that you have. Okay. So that way I know what the next session might be. And it might be your question that I take next and give you my thoughts on it. And so if you are just joining us for the very first time, this is where we meet. We're doing uh, lives 365 days this year in 2020, making it an amazing year in business and finishing it differently than where we started, right? And building a community, making biz buddies, and just making big jumps and leaps together in our business. So that's what we're up to. So yesterday, hi, Libby, how are you? Finally a day after come live. Well, today is a good one. Today is a good one. So I'm glad you're here. And you can catch up when you have a chance on the other ones because there's all kinds of little nuggets in all of them. So yesterday, it was either Debbie or Deborah. She was the one that made the wreath. She might be here today as well. And what I said, give me a, give me some of your questions. And she said, I just want to know how to sell more, right? So I'm like, that's a good question. How, to, how do we sell more of whatever it is that we're selling, right? And I started to say yesterday about how, like, don't, don't just, like, put the price tag on the very end pro on the very end product that you have and leave your audience out of the entire making and creating part of it. A lot of us in here are makers and creators, right? But this could apply for anything in business, no matter what it is, whatever it is that you're selling, right? There's things that happen in the lead up before you get to the end. And a lot of times we put the post out, we put the price onto it and it goes nowhere. Well, number one, it just like hit people out of the blue. You didn't get a chance to warm your audience up to that product right? It might have the price tag in with it, which means that, you know, it's going to be a selector, smaller grouping that's going to see that post because you're including numbers and it, it gets into the, you're selling something and Facebook gets a little weird about that, right? So how do we, how do we figure all that stuff out? How do we get around it? How do we sell stuff, Sonia? Like, how do we actually sell stuff? Well, we get smarter, right? And this is why we're in this group to get strategic to know how to keep Facebook happy and serve our customers and keep everybody happy at the same time. Because sometimes we want to get to the very end. I want to put it the product. Here's my thing. Buy my stuff. But sometimes we get crickets, right? So we haven't done, then there's a lot of work that we can do in between leading up to it, right? So that's the things that I'm going to teach you guys in here. And that is called marketing strategy, all right? It's a big word, but it just says knowing how to tell people about what you got going on, okay? <laughs> Sandy says, good morning and welcome. Sharon, it's a, my it's Miami 40 and uh, sunny down there. All right, send us some vitamin D. Sharon, if you haven't figured out your product yet, for all us ladies and guys, you know, that live in these cool zones, all right, I could ship you some snow. You ship me some vitamin D in a jar, and I bet you it will go over really, really well. So let's talk about how you can do more selling. And this is a quote that struck me that I read this quote last year and I wrote it down. And so sometimes things you hear stuff and it just moves you to action because you know at your own core, like you got to do that, right? Somebody can sit and tell you all day long what you have to do. But at the end of the day, you know what you have been doing and what you have have not been doing. And if you've, you've been kind of half and not really all the way, giving it your all, right? So this is the quote. If you are not selling, you are not in business. Think about that. Think about that. If you're not selling, you're not in business. When was the last time that you even told somebody about something you have for sale? Something that you have figured out that you want to sell to the general public as a way to solve a problem, um, something that they have going on in the marketing world. It's called a pain that your um, that your audience would have. And all it is is something that they would really find helpful in their life, okay? A solution to help them. That's why we buy, right? I mean, think about all the stuff that you see on TV. You go, Oh my gosh, I need that. You turn to your husband and go, babe, we need that. That's perfect. Perfect for the animals. Perfect for us. Perfect because you know what? I am that person and I need that. 
because that's a solution for me, right? They're not thinking about the makers and the creators. They're thinking it from the point of view of how is this going to help me? Because I work hard for my money and I want to make sure that what I'm buying is quality. I'm going to get top-notch surgery. Surgery. Don't get top-notch surgery. Top-notch. Drink more coffee, Sonia. Top-notch service, right? And I'm going to get what that person is telling me I'm going to get. Hence, the more of the reason to do Facebook Lives and to stand out and show people what you really are so that they know that when they do business with you, yeah, they are really going to get the real deal, right? Like the lady who I told you last week or this past week that wrote on my, my page because a lot of people are finding me, new people, and she wrote in my comment, I guess not thinking that I would even see it, but I showed up and commented too. And she said, you know, I'm so skeptical of buying buying things from ads that I see on, on Facebook. Now, I know Junk Monkey Paint Works. You know Junk Monkey Paint Works. She don't know me from anybody. You guys know me. You guys know that I wouldn't put out something that's crappy. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to like put my head on a pillow at night, right? Because that's just not the kind of person I am. And you're not that kind of person either. But people who walk upon you and find you in the Facebook world, wherever, they don't know anything about you yet, right? And so that's why it's important to show up. And so I just roll back and I say, you hang around here long enough, you'll see what actually goes down here at the Junk Monkey, right? Because it's, and you also have to understand that on, on the heels of what I just said, does that make sense what I just said? That it also takes somebody a period of time. I forget. Sometimes it changes. Sometimes I read articles that say it takes a person five times to see the same thing before they actually take action. Sometimes it takes a person eight to 10 times to see a commercial, a product before they take action, right? Think about, <laughs> yes, <yeah>, Sam, <Santa>, stop. <laughs> I didn't even talk this morning. Chandra says surgery equals seller's term for cutting to the chase. I like it. That'll be one of our words in here, okay, in our community. <laughs> Funny. Celeste. Yes, I do, my friend. I will definitely cover that. That's a great question, shipping. And I've, I've got lots of great things that could help you out with that. And I will make a day of that. Thank you very much. So, so yeah. So when you, uh, so you have to realize that you have to do it over and over again because then everybody sees it and everybody's going to believe it the very first time that, you know, think about when you see a product on TV and you see the product be shown and you're, um, you're like, okay, that's interesting. And then you see it again. And then you see it again. And you're like, we got to get this. Like, have you seen this yet? I'm telling you, I have seen this now. Like, I don't know how many times we should get this, right? Buy it, bring it home, right? You've seen the ninja, the ninja juicer or whatever it was, fill in the blank, right? And this is the other thing, speaking of the ninja blender or any sort of brand that when it, when it comes to juicing or whatever, let's use them as a great example. How many times do you see a picture? I got a big old cup this morning too, Judy. <laughs> I got thermos full. I need it today. So think about when you saw something like a juicer. All right. You can probably remember back to the first time you saw one in action. And it wasn't just because somebody showed a picture of a juicer and you're like, huh, okay. All right. Got a clear glass thing on the top. I don't know. You saw the, the bullet, the ninja bullet or something like that. It's because you saw it come to life, right? You saw somebody stick in some carrots or, or celery or spinach or something yummy, usually like oranges or berries and make a beautiful instant thing out of it, right? And you saw that and it came to life for you. So we can take a lot from the marketers that have come before us because they have done a lot of research and they have realized, why do you think QVC is so big? It is that when you do a show and tell on your product and you don't even just do it once, you do it multiple times because it might take people a couple times to see you doing it before they actually believe you or before their, their light goes off like, oh my gosh, I could totally do this on X, Y, Z that I have, right? So, you know, for me in the paint world, I show up and I paint all the time. And it's, I mean, I don't know if you can even think back to a time where I come out like an infomercial going, oh my gosh, you know, buy my paint, $16 for a pint plus size, high quality at low cost, right? Because that's what Sonia stands for. Everybody should deserve to be able to buy multiple colors of paint and be able to eat this week, okay? That's what I think. And when you are a community of thrifters and furniture flippers, you don't want to pay a, uh, you know, you don't want to pay more for the product than what you typically pay for what you're going to put on it, right? Like, I don't do that, right? There are people that do that, and there are people that turn people off by doing that, right? Go back to the beginnings, the humble beginnings of what you are. You are a creator first. And I promise that if you have a good product and you show up and you show people again and again what you do with it, no expectations, 
The questions will come naturally for you. They will ask you the questions about it. You can answer it and, and go on from there, right? But you don't have to wake up being an infomercial. In fact, if you have a good product, your product will speak for itself. So I want to talk to you today about show and tells. And this is a question I have for you, okay? And this is what I wrote down. When was the last time that you demonstrated your product? Not posted something that you have for sale. Totally different, all right? Not just post it, buy my bracelet, buy, you know, get my furniture painting services here, buy my wreath here. When was the last time you actually showed it in its natural habitat, right? What it's actually meant to do. If I posted all day long a can of paint and said, get it right here for this price, then I would quickly turn off my followers, right? Because that nobody wants to be sold to every single day they woke, they wake up. And that's what I've been saying forever, that people don't rise and shine going, what can I buy today? We just don't operate that ha, as humans like that, right? We wake up trying to survive, trying to make the best day we possibly can, you know, dodging all the bullets of negativity, showing up in life, trying to create a beautiful quality of life for ourselves. And then sometimes we see stuff that we don't, we didn't even realize existed. And now we see it in use and you go, I don't have to live like this anymore. Like I can go and I can buy that. Oh my gosh, where have you been all my life? Because you took the time to demonstrate the end versus the actual physical thing. So if all day long you're posting, going back to what I'm saying again, you're posting, buy my quilt, buy my wreath, buy my painted furniture, right? The reason why people buy those things from you is to solve a problem in their life. So we got to stop and we got to say, what problem am I solving? And let me show you. All right. I have no doubt that every time I do the work, the, using the energy, instead of putting a post out with a physical can, that means nothing to people. All right. It's like I, I said earlier on, business cards will not sell your product that you have. Right. You sell your product that you have. It's by demonstrating and showing that you fully believe in your product the point that you will go live, that you will show up, that you will not hide behind a logo. You stand behind what you got, right? And so instead of just posting a can, I'm going to show up and do what I started with being a creator that started this business organically from a, or from a labor of love, just knowing, like the lady that messaged me yesterday, that if she bought a you know a, a plug-in fireplace and she doesn't like the brownie frowny look at look at it, yes, yes, girl, go paint it. Go paint it in that farmhouse white and distress it because you don't have to keep it brown just like you bought it, right? And now it fits your space and your face, your space feels cozier and you're happier with your home. And when you're happier with your surroundings, you know, this, you just feel better because I don't know, things somehow feel like life is put together, right? You've created a safe place for yourself. So think bigger than the actual product that you are and do a show and tell. I'm also going to tell you one of the biggest things right now that's trending when it comes to how people are selling. How do I do more show and tell, Sonia? Let me fill you in on something here in just a second. So the power of live. If picture is worth a thousand words, what do you think video is? When I'm going to ask you again, when was the last time that you demonstrated your product for people? Because if you have that wreath, right? We use the example of the wreath. If you have the final wreath, right? When was the last time you showed somebody you hanging it on your door? If you sell wreaths, no doubt you believe in them. So you probably have them around your house right now, right? Um, you know, when was the last time that you brought it to life for people where you're delivering a wreath to somebody and they're hanging it on their door? Or maybe they sent you in a picture with the wreath on the door, right? That's like a demonstration of the product overall. So that's product based. Some of you guys do services and that is your product. That is your product, right? Because you have, um, whether it's informational based, that's what you sell and you put a price tag on it because knowledge is power, all right? Knowledge is power. I used to charge people for what I'm telling you guys right now, right? Now I'm offering it for free. I'm doing it for free. I did my paid membership for two years and I love talking business and I wanted to bring it back and create a community and this is what I'm doing now. But just to show you that information can also be your product, right? So maybe you're really good at something and you're going to go and sell tutorials about what it is that you have come to learn and do through trial and through effort and to getting in the right space to be able to sell and be successful. Now, the other thing that you could do, your product could be a service that you offer to somebody. Hey, I paint furniture for a living. Hey, I mow lawns for a living. Um, let's see. I will shovel your driveway. That's what I do for a living. I paint kitchen cabinets for a living. 
And you're not really given a physical product, right? That's a service. So some of you guys have grown your business by way of saying that whether it's one, it's one of the arms of revenue of service, meaning that you, you can make money different ways. And so sometimes you're selling something physical, sometimes you're offering a service, but maybe all you're doing is posting about that service. All right. I see people all the time on like local sales trades once and they say, hey, we'll shovel your driveway five dollars. Right. And but you know what? There's one once in a while that, well, man, they just make a killing at it because you know what they do? They up it right without even realizing that what they're doing is amazing. Have you seen this before where somebody who's just trying to make a buck and doing what they're doing? They have a moment of brilliance where they take out their smartphone and their camera on their phone and they film. We just did this for this neighbor here on Main Street. We can do this for you too. Five dollars. Don't you think the impact is bigger when they show what their service does and brought it to life so people can see when right now they are amidst of like snow covered cars and just, you know, uh, trip hazards and everything is, you know, the kid, the, the snow is up to your knees and you need it shoveled and you haven't got time. And then you visually see the service that somebody has and you're visualizing, man, we need the car shoveled out so bad. We need the driveway shoveled out so bad. <clears throat> And that show and tell, remember we're talking about show and tell and how to sell your business today, right? Brings it to life or yes, I want that. So what do you think the pain was for the person that decides to go ahead and take them up on their services? The pain was they don't have time to shovel their own driveway, but they want that driveway like that picture, like that, that business showed, right? And that is a move to action because now you can visualize yourself into it, right? You can actually visualize yourself there. Why do you think companies create apps where you can move your furniture around virtually now, right? You can like, I don't know, upload a picture of your room and somehow see colors into it. It's because we're visual people, a lot of us, and we're, it's being personalized. And all of a sudden for the first time, if somebody said, download this app, Sonia, but when you see it come to life and you, there's some of you into it, you're like, oh, okay, I like this, right? Yeah, nobody's shoveling Newfoundland for $5 this month. It's so funny. I was thinking about back home on the island, all the snow they got. Holy moly, they're probably still trying to shovel themselves out just to be able to get to their customers. <laughs> so you have to you have to show and you have to tell. So a couple of the examples, all right? I, I pretend I cut hair. Don't let me cut your hair, okay? Don't let me, there was one time with me and my sister, I did not realize that when I cut her bangs, that when you put them wet, I'm telling you, it's a bad thing because you know what? When your hair is wet and then it shrinks, it goes shorter. Poor girl couldn't go to school for over a week and cried every morning. Never let your big sister cut your hair, okay? Go to a professional. We still laugh over that. We were younger and it was just really funny. See, I was always made to be an entrepreneur, but I ruled out that beauty school was not for me. Stick with painting, Sonia. <laughs> Clarity through action, say it with me. So think about like if you're a salon and you sell something. If you just keep posting about what you have for sale, I do $15 cuts, $20 cuts, whatever. Don't you think it's going to be so much more powerful if you show and actually tell people what you you show them? <laughs> Funny. So don't you think that, that, that if you brought it to life and now I just did this on somebody's hair or you do a live or you do a video and you're because you're not you're not just telling somebody you're showing somebody, Right. You're showing somebody, all right? Let me break, told you like me going down the rabbit hole of before and after transformations because we all go through these periods. We want long hair, we want short hair, right? We want what we don't have. Or we want curly, we want straight. And so we will watch those things to justify what we need to do next, all right? So sometimes people will go down the rabbit hole of whatever you're doing and, and go, all right, I need this. But if you don't show them, if you don't show them and you just keep it at the product level, and you're missing a whole other bringing it to life so they can visualize for themselves whether they need your product. It helps them make a decision, right? If they want it or not. So anything that you do, if you're just selling a house and you have photos, you know what's more better? Oh man, when you can do the virtual tour, when somebody will take you into the home, right? Because you're seeing again, it's like you're seeing the final product, right? You're, 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 you can really visualize it now. It's not just black and white on paper. It comes to life. When I did kitchen cabinets and I, when I ended my, I'll call it my career in kitchen cabinets, I did kitchen, kitchen cabinets for about a year and a half of my life. And at that point, I was at a, at a point where I had grown my business so much, I could have went on and hired a team of guys or girls underneath me and built a cabinet painting empire. But that's why I say 
clarity through action, and you get to decide what you like. For me, I really miss the creativity. And all the blocks of time that I was painting in a kitchen cabinet, I was just itching to get, because that's a big, muddy project. I, I just itched it. I, for me, I missed doing the smaller projects, the creativity that came with it. So I did it for a period of time. I made lots of friends with the people that I painted for. But if you remember that period of time, what did I do? I would always show the before, the brownie, fat frowny, right? And then I might show a during, like here's where we are right now. But I always showed the after. Right. And I always said the before and I always said the after because, you know, when I had that ha that happy homeowner in the room with me and I was doing a reveal. Oh, my gosh, guys, they're seeing it for the same time. You're seeing it as well. What do you think? And they come in a room and they love it. You know, that's more than me saying buy my paint. Right. That's me showing how it's put to good use. All right. So it could be furniture. It could be anything you want to paint. Right. Paint anything under the sun. But yes, it's strong enough to do your kitchen cabinets with. And that brought it to life for a lot of people who went on to do their own if they wanted to go on to do their own. And this is, like I say, making arms of revenue and realizing that, Sonia, all the knowledge that you gained from doing 70 sets of cabinets, you can't be everywhere. So what Sonia do? She filmed a video and she sold the informational, uh, the informational video, right? The tutorial for other people who wanted to do it too. But for a lot of people, it's seeing that final product. The other way that it really helped is that I was in the middle of looking for clients, right? And I got to a point where I, I stopped taking booking, bookings because I was three months out. I was three months out. So I could I could like see my future for three months straight. I'm like, holy moly, this is getting insane. Every day people are contacting me. There's only one of me. I either grow this kitchen cabinet painting business bigger and go huge with it. Or I have a moment and I go, okay, Sonia, you're a year and a half in. All right. Is this what you want to do? Do you want to go bit this bigger in this area of your business or do you want to change and evolve? Right. Because you learn a lot. Now I can talk about kitchen cabinet painting till the cows come home because say it with me, clarity through action. Right. But it's the show and tell. I didn't just tell people what they could do. You have seen me paint. You have seen me paint anything and everything that I will find. Right. I mean, I don't know if there's anything that I have not painted. I don't stick to one thing. And you're a creative and I know that you don't stick to just one haircut, right? Like there's just a lot of things that you do within whatever it is that you do, but it's not just the telling by my wreath, it's the showing. So I'm hoping that you guys are getting that, <clears throat> that taking that an extra step further is going to mean more sales, more sales for you because maybe some people just can't visualize that wreath on their door just yet, right? Show them the difference when it, when you take off a wreath that's already there. Okay, so Sonia is not blessed in the wreath world, right? So you know what you got to do is you got to be like, even if, sometimes if you had to do this with some friends, this is a great way to do it. So if you say, um, hey, I'll come and can I use your door as because you got a beautiful door. Can I use it as a backdrop? And as a result from my marketing materials, I want to just film a quick segment for my audience and show them what I do and how it can help them. Your friend says, yeah, sure. You're going to give me a wreath? Yes, please. Sonia says, yes, come over anytime. Go for it. My front door is your front door. Go film your happy pants, okay? So what you do is you go, Sonia bought, okay, this $20 wreath she, or $10 wreath, okay, true story, from the Dollar General, and she has it on her door. And it's got a few flowers that might have got mushed because they were stacked on each other in the boxes, all right? So I want to show you today. Let's take this wreath, okay? This Just, just size up this boring wreath that Sonia's got there right now. It's the basic of the most basic wreaths. Take it off, all right? Join me in the studio. I'm going to show you how I take an existing wreath that you bought, this base, for 10 bucks for 5 bucks, and how just by adding a few extra florals into it, florals that you love, we can jazz it up and make it look so much more high-end and make your door look better, all right? So here's what I'm doing. All right, let's go back to Sonia's door and see how it looks. Remember the before, right? Let's all remind ourselves what the before was. Now, let's put on the second one. And did you see what I did? I put in some spring pops of color in here, return into the season. And all of a sudden, people are going, whoa, now you got me, right? Because seeing a wreath being made on a table, you don't display a wreath on a table, right? The selling comes when you show people how to use it because you're solving their pain point. They want a beautiful front doorway. They want a door that says, hello, and the neighbors go wild. And they go, wow, man, that Sonya is always put together, right? Because her house just looks so nice and I want that, right? Even that gets painted, you got it. So does that make sense? So I wanna ask you again, the quote that we said at the beginning, 
If you're not selling, are you even in business? If you're afraid to tell people about what you're doing, are you even in business today? All right. If your business is open every single day, you should be and you don't have a storefront to be physically open at. You should be virtually open online every single day, letting people know that you're there, letting people know that you are consistent. You're an expert and you show up every single day that you're not taking bunches of time off, that you're so serious that they can come to you and they're going to get what they want from you. And you are what you mean because you're so good at what you do that you show up now. Here's another application, okay? Here, here is how a show and tell, a basic show and tell works in, or what is working right now and that you see a lot of marketers do, okay? And when I say this, you're going to go, oh my gosh, that's why they do it. That's why they do it because, you know, there are always people out there going, okay, so we know that if we, if there, if somebody sees our stuff and we don't just tell them what we have. We show them what we can do for them and we bring it to life for them. There is a greater chance that they will buy. Hence, welcome to 2019, 2020, where pop-up groups really became all the rage, okay? Have you ever heard of Join My Pop-Up Challenge, right? We've all, there's challenges going on where people are going to come in, join my group for, I don't know, and typically they run for five days or seven days. That's usually what you see them for. And they say, come in, join my pop-up group. My, I am hosting a challenge. I'm hosting a tidy challenge for a week. A lot of those like launch in the month of January, right? Um, I don't know, create art for five to six days with me straight. All right. Come in, join my pop-up, uh, my pop-up challenge because they're called challenges, right? Because we like a good challenge because that kind of appeals to us. What are we doing here? It's a challenge, right? Well, what's happening is that groups are being created, a hyper-focus. So you, instead of just showing and telling to the entire audience, you're going, join me in a challenge so I can show and tell you what I do on the side over here. And you won't even know that you're being sold to. Have you ever been to a, uh, a challenge that lasted a couple of days and at the very end, you're getting information on a certain subject and at the very end, buy my book, right? Um, join my membership, my paid membership. Okay. After five days of me doing a show and tell of how much I know and how much I can talk on a certain subject that might intrigue you to join my challenge. Then I'm, I'm doing a show and tell all week. Right. And then at the very end, and the other thing is when you, when you pull people into a group like that, it's like they don't lose focus with all the other things, right. That's going on because they're, they're hyper-focused on something right now. Right. So then what happens is you also are in a group and then we then we add. I'm just telling you, this is how this is marketing. So when you look at things, you understand how they work and you can decide what feels good for you, what doesn't make you feel icky, but what the agenda, the underlying agenda could be. Right. So the underlying agenda could be join my X, Y, Z, buy my product, but you got to hyper focus. And now with a group of people. And so what happens with a group of people, the moment somebody says, I'm in, I'm buying it. I just signed up. I got mine. <laughs> what do we all do? We all go, we're jumping off the cliff too, right? Like it, it's because now you have that extra element in marketing of you have, uh, you have the social proof there combined, right? So some of you go, will go on to create your own group challenges, but just know that it's done from the marketing standpoint, right? That's, that's, how a true marketer would go at it using on the premise of what I'm just telling you, the basic good morning, Stanley show and tell. All right. So then what happens is, and, and that's, that's the meat of it, right? So some of you will go on and host your own nice, genuine one. And yes, you can upsell at the end, right? But just make sure you're giving value to people that are in that group with you. They can decide for themselves if they want to go on to join you on the continued path. But that is why challenges pop up, because it's on the premise of what I'm telling you, that show and tell works. You have somebody's captive audience for a week and they're showing and telling you what they can do for you, typically in an area that you're maybe interested in, but they don't give you everything. Right. You have to take some extra steps or it could work like, for example, uh, for those of you who quilt in here um, or something like that, because that was one of the examples that you guys gave you have a quilt challenge where you're doing, doing a block a day and every day you're coming on and you're sewing your block and you're showing somebody how to do that block for their quilt. But at the end, or even during that week, what are they seeing you use? Maybe a tool that you invented, okay? A tool that you invented, something to thread the needle with, some set of needles that you have. I don't know, a, a block slicer for some sort of like pizza cutter thingy for, that's why I shouldn't be making quilts because pizza cutter thingy for your quilt, right? 
at the end that for everybody in this group, um, for anybody, for everybody who joined my challenge, I'm going to give you a 50% off coupon. All right. So that's why I say people use challenges to demonstrate show and tell because you have a cop captive audience with somebody who's definitely shown interest, right? Without even having to do it to the massive audience that you have, because there could be a lot of reasons why people are following you, right? You just kind of zone in on that on that area. Now, what happens when you create a challenge is we also know that sometimes, and the other thing is um, the other way it shows up and, and it's, they're still happening, but now um, challenge groups are probably more of the hot trendy thing when it comes to marketing, show and tell marketing. But there's also webinars. How many times have you seen a webinar pop up and it says, join my webinar? I will give you a completely free training on XYZ, right? And a lot of times it will cover a topic for you, but it doesn't really give you like a lot of times the marketer will talk about what you should be doing but there's no how to do it. So their upsell is the buy my book and I'll show you the how. Get in my course and I'll show you the how, right? The other big thing that's really come on is, and, and talking about show and tells, and then you get ideas of how it works is you do a, I don't know, a five part marketing video series because you realize that sometimes people just wanna watch video. So what you do is jump into my, give me, give me your email because emails are gold. And you watch the video, again, show and tell, you're seeing something come to life, right? And at the very end, then you have the upsell for the overall course, whatever it is. Now, a lot of times when when um, these are also done, you know, whatever demonstration, whichever avenue you wanna go, if you decide to go that way, you're also capturing an email. Um, you know, you're capturing a piece of information before you're giving it to people, right? Because that email goes on to be on a mailing list, which now you can target that person over and over again for. I was reading something this past week and I'm like, are you kidding me? Is that why ads follow me? And it said, have you ever been on a website and you've never visited ever the Facebook page for uh, a certain product, but you just Google a product. Next thing you know, it is in your Facebook feed and you're like, how the heck? Well, what happens is Facebook and marketers that really go in and play with the dashboard behind the scenes of Facebook, um, they have cookies on their website. So you go in and one minute I'm, I'm typing in the car how many carbs are in dandelion tea and if there's even anything I need to know about. And the next thing I know, I'm getting all kinds of stuff into my Facebook feed is because marketers, marketers are able to capture when they have your email. Did you know that marketers now, because you sign up through uh, Facebook with an email, right? That they're able to, in a lot of cases, identify and track you back to your Facebook page. Facebook is where you get social. So when you left the website, never, ever, never, ever went on to their Facebook page. You were just on the website, right? So maybe you're on the website to get a, I don't know, a free PDF download or whatever it was. Next thing you know, you got the ads, right? So if you're given email out, you, you know, a marketer can go on to email you. You can go on to do this to your clients if you want to. Again, everybody grows their, their business different ways, but I'm just telling you how show and tell shows up in everyday marketing. And sometimes we don't realize it, but it's actually just a spin on the premise of you show people what you got over and over again. And what does Sonia say at the beginning? Sometimes statistics says it takes people about five times before they jump onto something. Sometimes it might take them seven, eight times. Guess what those challenges are, those group challenges. They typically last five to seven to eight days, right? Five days to a week. So it all goes back to the ground premise of how our thinking as humans work. And then something is created out of it, right? A marketing strategy, a marketing plan. And if you listen to marketers, people who get really geeked out over marketing, that's called a sales funnel, okay? So the fun funnel is for you to get on my webinar that's the sales funnel. I've collected your information, right? So I can send you the link for the webinar. I can target you later with ads, whether you want them or not, right? Because you've already said yes and accept it to get this free piece of information. So now you're in my database, all right? And you said, yes, you gave it to me. So unless you unsubscribe out of it, you will be on my marketing forevermore. You've just been added. Now I'm gonna show up in your inbox. So every day you check your email, I'm going to be there, right? So that is overall, that's how we're seeing the show and tell applied to a further marketing efforts. Does that make sense? So that's how it works. Yes, he does. He's aw, Stanley's sitting in the window. Can I show you guys real quick? He's so sweet. Look at him right there. Can you see him? Look at him. <laughs> Stanley 
how are you? He was so cute. He was just sitting there. You were turned the other way looking out the window a moment ago. What happened, Stanley? See, we put attention on him. So he's like, I'm not having it, lady. Go back and do your thing. So yes. So does show and tell work? Yes. That's how that's how marketing is happening today. And that's why things are following you. But the most basic thing that we have to know is that we can show and tell as crazy in a crazy way as we wanna we wanna do it out there. Um, but the most basic is you going onto your Facebook page today and it's free and talking to people just doing what you created that for, right? What you made that for. Showing somebody today something that you're doing, a transformation, a before and after, so they can really see why they should buy it and how it can impact them if they do, right? <laughs> Loris, I love him. Show and tell, yep. When do we when do we put a price to the visual? Every single day, you should always make sure that you're including whatever product, service, or solution is. Just don't make them all. So if I say to you, I you know for me, I like to post three day three three times a day. I always tell you at the very minimum, post two times a day because people are not seeing everything. And if you're only posting one time a day, and the only thing that you're posting is this paint class that you have coming up. Um, you know, or buy this bracelet and, you know, you're not even showing them any, adding that any extra value. It's always buy, buy, buy. If you're doing one sales post a day and that's all you're doing and your Facebook page is going to tank, right? So if I'm telling you that at least one of your posts a day should be about your product, your service, your solution, because going back to the beginning, if you're not selling, you're not in business. My door is open today. I will post something about what it is that keeps my doors open today, right? Knowing that Facebook doesn't show it to everyone. People are not, even when you send out a post, you have to realize, realize that real life is happening, right? And not everybody is on their phones at the same time. A lot of times we miss posts because we're busy. We're doing something, right? We could be at a kid's graduation. They're not always on their phones. As much as people are on the phones, yes, there are times that we miss stuff, right? We have to sleep. So if you're posting at least one thing a day that incorporates what it is that you're selling, Make the other two things about serving people, okay? So what can you do today for them? What can you do for today for them? And it could be doing a live today. Remember how we talked this week about, you know, finding something um, to put a smile on their face today. I just posted a picture and said, good morning, put your happy face on, or let's get our face on and get going. Happy Wednesday, right? I'm not selling anything in that. I didn't create that piece of content, right? Because I thought it was a feel-good piece, you want your audience to feel good, right? You want to create relationship with them and you don't just want to use them because they're more than that, right? And so if you just see them as I'm only going to post what's for sale all the time, you'll lose your audience, all right? Because it's a two-way street and um, your, fit, your Facebook page will and then every time you try to push it out. Yeah, if you're in a place right now where every time you post something, it goes nowhere, you know your Facebook page is broken, Right. What you need to do is power up. So go back and watch the other training sessions on here where I talked about um, doing things that give life, like going live on video, right? That's instant life to your page. Pulling over things from other pages that have proven social engagement <clears throat> and people really like it, right? The stuff that's gone viral that could fit within your brand, right? That's a great, great power source. But at least every day, yes, you should post something that you have for sale, but you also got to take the time. That might come easy. That's the easy part, right? The part that we might have to think a little bit more on is how can I serve somebody today? Can I come on live and answer a question for them? What's a question that I've been getting because I've been posting more. Now I'm getting more questions from people. You know, can I take a question and do a demonstration today for them? Um, you know, can I help them with something? You know, I, I make scarves, amazing, unique scarves. And they've been saying to me, I want to buy your scarf, but I just don't know what to do with it. Man, if you are painting scarves, silk scarves, then you know what your show and tell should be? I'd be showing my people every single day how to tie a scarf, how to like different ways you can do it, how easy it is, showing them the steps. That's a show and tell, right? Because a, saying I have a scarf for sale in a box or a picture is not going to mean a hill of beans, right? Unless somebody maybe somewhere seen you at a show and they or saw you or, you know, it's been brought to life for them. But for the most people, 
they need to see it come up and actually like make an impact on their life so they can see it and go, well, I'd look super cute in that darn, darn scarf. All right. I do handmade shawls. When was the last time you did a live and you said, guys, I want to show you. And maybe that could be your sell. So your selling doesn't always have to be a physical post, like a picture of the object yourself or to, for the day you're, you're making sure. Cause at the end of the end of the day, we got to wrap our minds around that. If we're not selling, we're not in business and you're not going to be able to afford to keep your business afloat. If you don't get over and get the confidence to show people and tell people what it is that you're selling, right? Your business will not stay alive. You can't expect to have, and that's what I always get back. I always say you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't tell people about it, how are they going to know about it? There are people that will be thankful that you tell people about it because they'll go, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful I found you because if you didn't shout it from the roof to rooftops, I would have never known that you're here. And it's been life-changing for me, right? I really needed this. I'm so thankful you told people that you're doing this on the side, right? That you're making this, that you're creating, that you're holding this, that whatever it is. So you're selling for the day. It doesn't always have to be the traditional point and click. Here's a picture of what I have for sale today. I made this tumbler. And the price is, I don't know, $30, all right? Why don't you go live and demonstrate it? Whatever it is, you fill in the blank. Whatever, that house that you're trying to sell, that scar, that that wraparound thing, you know what? If I did a live and I said, guys, I just finished this one right here. Oh my gosh, it took me like three months to get this done. And I crocheted little tiny, I don't know, little tiny flowers onto it. You see the little sweet vintage buttons that I put there. There's three buttons right there. So, uh, so pretty. And this is how it flows. What do you guys think of this style? Bring it to life for people and say, this is a new one that I did. Now, the one that I did before, it looked, it looked a little bit like this here. So you see this one have more of a bell shape. This one's more shorter, more like a cape bring it to life, right? How many times have you seen me, me go live and people go, can you zoom in on the, on the color again? Can I see how many grays that you have? It's because they're able to see it, right? They can't see it in a can. They want to see it come to life. And they'll ask you questions. Put that one back on again that you just had on. I, oh, you're selling. Okay, so maybe you're a boutique and you sell clothes. You know what? Bring back that, bring back that shirt again, that flower shirt. I think I might need that one. No, maybe the cactus one over here. What's that one again? Pull that one out again. You had that one. Can you bring that out again? That's what happens, right? That's just our natural tendencies. <laughs> you are so funny. Steely is such a handsome man, isn't he? I just love my cat. <laughs> Hence why I posted cats with cactus, uh, the cactus tails of the planters, right? So sweet. Cats are so fun. And Stanley has definitely uh, been awesome in this in the new house that we purchased here, you know, he had a change of scenery. We weren't sure how he was going to, how he was going to like deal with it. Would he run away? And we live in an area now, whereas before we were in the woods, now we are here and, you know, we're on a main street, just worried about him. And, you know, if the cars, cars would, um, you know, scare him or, you know, cause any problems for him, hazards. And that cat, he's just loving life right now more than ever. Judy says, what if you post things already sold? I have people messaging me if that's available still. No, it isn't, but I might have a, yeah. How do you explain and keep them interested? So you could say, um, so for me, I could post a piece. I'm, I mean, I've been painting furniture for over 10 years. So I've got a lot, a lot of pictures. I could post a picture and say, um, you could say, I love just with it. Like for me, I, I could post something and say, oh, the time I did stripes on the side of this dresser. That was my nail, Stanley. That was my nails. You're good. You're good. You're good. There's no mouse in the room or squirrel. Nope. You're good. Nothing's pitter patting its feet. <laughs> Look at his little chest fur. Like, how can you not love that right there? Stick it out. Sweetest thing ever. See, I get sidetracked with the cat. So I could post a picture and say, remember the time that I, I love the time that I did stripes on this. I remember the time I did shabby flowers on this. I remember the time I did napkins on this. Throw back to the time. You can phrase it as a question. Did you guys ever incorporate bold color? Do you also love to put stripes on your stuff? Um, anybody else paint shabby flowers and love to include it onto, onto their furniture? You could do it that way. And if somebody says, you can just write back and say to them, no, I did this, this one before. Do you think I should do another one? You could say that, right? And if people want to buy it, um, you know, maybe that's an avenue for you. Do you want to open up a uh, stream of revenue where, you know, from, that's how I, that's one of the ways I started was I was putting one piece up for sale and people would write and go, is it sold? And I go, yeah, I'm sorry. And then the 15 people that came later, then I said, 
I began to say to them after one person said to me, well, I have one that's almost just like it. It's my daughter's nightstand. If I bring it to you, can you paint it just like that one that you sold? Yeah, I guess I could. Ding, ding, ding. Additional arm of revenue right there. So then I realized that even when I sold a piece of furniture, that I, that I was the creator, I could redo that again on another piece, right? So now I have a second, I can sell the piece and make money that way. Now I can offer, um, you know, the services of doing that same look. So friends, you love that kitchen cabinet I just painted, changed it from brownie frowning to a classic antique lace. Well, let me know if you want me to do that for you too, right? That's an old photo, but you're using it in the present day to um, show people that you're still available to do it because hello, you did it before, you can do it again, right? So it can be a great thing for inspiration. Like, hey friends, this piece went to a loving home, but I went brave and I put some stripes on the side of it. Um, I think it was a good idea at the time. Who else adds stripes into their furniture? So never just because, uh, you know, like, oh gosh, I did the, pro the, the project and now it's done, it's burnt off. No, no, no. You can recycle what you've already done, right? Into um, something today. And you know what? Maybe that could be a great discussion for tomorrow. What do you think? Thank you, Judy, for that question, because I think that would be something that we can tackle tomorrow. Taking hold, old material and because, you know, it's, it can get exhausting when you're always having to make and create every single day. Unless you love it, you have the time to do it. Um, you know, it, it gets hard, especially when you're not doing it on a full time basis and you have something else that, that you know, or even just something that demands a lot of your attention. It can be hard to always feel like you're you got to be creating. Right. And hello, you want to take vacation. So what do you do then? So and now Sonia tells me I got to post like, I don't know, three things a day. What the heck does she want me to put in there? Do I always have to be doing new stuff? So why don't we talk about that? Because I think, Judy, that's a really good subject because it can be really demanding to always fill the hopper, always feel fill the hopper. When I worked in a newsroom, um, that is what we called. We called it feeding the goat, OK, because news happens 24 seven and you're only as good as your last news story. And then you know what? You got to find something else to contribute to the newsroom, right? And every single day, people turn in for the news. So you do it. You put it out there. Now you got to go. The goat ate it all. Now you got to go and feed the goat again, right? So I learned that from my my uh, newsroom days. And so, yeah, sometimes it can feel like you're always feeding the goat and the goat eats it fast. And you're like, <laughs> what are we going to do now? So we're going to have to uh, work on that. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. You are so welcome, Judy. We'll work on more on your question tomorrow, too. I think that's a good idea, Stanley. What do you think? Oh, I just love it when he gives me those Puss in Boots eyeballs, too, right? He just he's gives you these big eyeballs. <laughs> Feeding the goat, yeah, because the goat just <laughs> takes it all, right? Kind of like my chihuahuas, too, right? Yeah, we all know. Tammy said, just wanted to say hello. Oh, yes, absolutely, Tammy. So today we talked about selling about show and tell, about how to sell more in business and about modern day trends when it comes to marketing. So you can see how it's being applied today, right? And you can decide if you wanna take a couple different paths depending on how you wanna go as you market in the future, but it's to show you that what I'm saying works. And in fact, it's being applied in a couple other modern day ways as well on the same take of showing, telling, giving people the appetizer, right? And they'll probably purchase the meal later, right? That's just how it goes. Can we touch on seasonal business sometimes? Sure. What would you, specifically, Chris, what would you like to know about seasonal business? Tell me some of your biggest questions. You got a question for me, Stanley? <laughs> email list. Lori says so a question for Lisa. And what would you like to know about email list? So tell me specifically something that about an email list that you would like me to touch on. Oh, Lisa's up there. She's saying, how do you feel about email list? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Emails, um, there are a lot of people who are not I've tested the power of the email um, list, and this is why I can honestly tell you that there are times that I have put things uh, to my email list and, well, I should, let me go back. I've learned over time that it's important to have ways to contact your customers, right? 
And you don't always put your trust into social medias because there's social media blackouts. Um, you know, times when it just goes down, you can't reach your people. Does that mean that your business has to stop? No, because you have different ways to be able to reach your audience, right? Um, there are times when your customer is not on social media. There are times that your customer will miss something that you put out. Um, what was I going to say as well? And, and the reason why I know I've tested it myself is because I have put things for sale. Oh, this is the other thing I was going to say. I've also learned from speaking to a lot of my customers that a lot of them are not on social media. And a lot of, um, a lot of professions that really the way they describe it to me is they don't want to be in the fishbowl. They don't want to uh, be on, on social media because they will get scrutinized by other people and they just don't go there, right? Like it's, it's for the best that they just stay off social media. And as a result, they've asked me like, do you have, can you send me, send me the information, but I'm not on social media, right? Well, I can email it to you. So email definitely works because not all your customers want to even be on social media because they're like, nope, ain't getting over there, ain't getting involved in that over there. Not with what I, not with the public job that I do. I can't be seen posting on stuff, liking stuff, and then somebody taking it out of context. And it just, you know, we've all, we all know stories like that that happen, right? And so they just avoid it. So does that mean that you have to leave a bunch of customers behind? No, you just got to find a different way to communicate with them, right? Now, email list, you can't just take somebody's email and um, decide to email them. They have to what's called opt in. They have to give it to you, right? Because that's the law. Right. Otherwise, you're spamming someone, spamming somebody. And that's a whole other legal thing. That's a whole other. You never want to do that. Right. Get yourself into some major trouble that way. So the way people come on your email list is because they opt in and they say, yes, I want to be on your email list. And then you have to give them a way to opt off as well. So they're not held captive. That's the law. And so that's why when you use an email service, uh, you got to make sure that one's built in that gives you, you know, if you go to the bottom of my emails, the last thing it always says is if you would like to unsubscribe from this email, click here. That's the law. So if you're using a email service and I'll talk more about this, but I just kind of want to quickly give you an overview right now that um, so you always have to give people a way to opt out. They opted in, they opt themselves out. You're not controlling them in any sort of way, right? They're free to go. Otherwise, like I said, then you, you're getting yourself into some legal issues. Um, but if they opted in, they want to receive your information, right? And then until they don't want to, and then they opt back out of it again. It's it's pretty easy peasy. But the reason why I know that email list works is because there's been times that I have sent a offer to my email list and said, guys, I only have so many. I appreciate those of you who stay in close contact with me here um, on my email list. And I consider my email list like my, my VIP, my super fans, the people who always want to stay attached and want to know what's going down. And they can decide for themselves. Hi, Stanley. Now he's down here by my hip. Um, they can decide for themselves, um, you know, if they want the offer or not, but they want to stay attached to you and know what's going on so they don't miss out. You know, an email is going to get through pretty much. So I have sent stuff that have never made it publicly because the moment it goes to my email list, um, my people over there go, I want it, I want it, I want it, you know, before you even put it publicly. So sometimes um, there are products that get sold out within three minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes of me putting it to an email list versus even it making it to my Facebook page. Right. And, um, you know, I like to treat my email list like my VIP. So if I have a coupon to send out, I'm going to send it out to them that might never, ever make it over to my Facebook page. So by the way, you should be on my email list because we're getting ready to send out another code here very soon. Um, so yeah, but I'm going to talk about more about that because you got to talk about, um, yes, that's a good one. Bridget says she'd love to hear me cover sooner before later about selling on Facebook. Oh, this is good. I like this Facebook marketplace. Yep. Sold there. I've sold on Craigslist. Absolutely. But let's talk about that and how um, pros and the cons, the good and the bad. Candy says, I did a large email holiday event and it ended up in customer spam. I'm sure some of them got through, you know, that's probably a general statement. I'm sure not all of them made, um, you know, it, it can depend as well what you send out. So there are certain things that do better through email because a lot of people have their emails set up to be super guarded, which wouldn't you, right? And um, it makes a difference what you actually put in the content. So I can talk a little bit more about that as well. I'm sure some of it got through, but... Some of it might have went to spam. So that's something that we can work on too. 
keeping people interested during the winter. Do we post a personal phone number on the Facebook page? Do we post through winter and, and then beef up starting? So what do you do, Chris? Remind me what you do. I forget about that when I worked. I couldn't be happy. I couldn't be on social media. Yeah, right. Chris says I really had to watch it as a government employee. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that that just because you're a government employee. I know Chris. Chris loves color. Chris loves painting. Chris is creative, right? It doesn't mean that um, that she wouldn't love a wreath or something like that just because she's not on social media. She's going to want another way for you to contact her. She wants to be part of the community. Lisa says, have a weekly or monthly newsletter, freebie for joining. Yes, all those things. Okay, I'm looking at MailChimp. Perfect. Do you set up at the shop on your business page or have a or have a few items you have for sale? Do you set up the shop? Oh, yeah. Okay. I know what you mean there. Good question. But well, we're going to be talking about all this stuff in the next couple of days. So Claudia is talking about where you can, um, I'm guessing where you can embed products onto your Facebook. So when they come onto your Facebook, you ever been there and you see all the products at the top? Let's talk about that. I used to do that. Pam says um, she wants to definitely do the blocky words. Yesterday I was playing with a screen share and I haven't figured out just yet. So I wanna get that figured out because I'd like to be able to flip my screen um, for those types of tutorials. So give me a couple more days to work on that. Cool. Nice. Hey, Amy, how are you? It says, have your eggs in multiple baskets. That's absolutely right. Spread it out. If something happens to Facebook, you have your customer's information. That's right. That's right. Over on, you're talking about like your email to be able to um, contact them. Absolutely. You got it. Cool. So we talked about a lot today. You guys gave me some great topics for the next couple of days, which I will get into. And um, yeah, so are you showing and you're telling? If you're not selling, you're not in business. Don't be afraid to at least tell people once per day and amongst all the value things that you give to them, whether it's educating them, bringing a smile to their face, inspiring them, you know, the things that you're doing that's not always buy my stuff, right? Um, and then do the one thing that you are that, you know, emphasizes and shines a light back on you what you're doing, then yeah, think about doing a live, thinking about doing a show and tell. And instead of burning off that post just to be a physical product picture, think about how you can bring it to life for people. Stanley, kitty, kitty, kitty. I think Stanley is trying to say, will you take me to, will you take me to the room that you feed me human? Look at these eyes, he's so sweet. All right, I'll be there. So guys, thanks for joining me for another chit chat this morning. It's nine o'clock. I got lots of work to do today and I know you do too. So we're gonna get at it and get it done and make sure you do something today that will move your business forward. Nice, Chris just uh, painted two vanities and both of them sold, whoop, whoop. Yeah, we're gonna go feed the goat. Oh, wow. Okay, go. so Chris does, um, they do the, Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I know what you're doing now. So when you say seasonal, and you're doing like farmer's markets in the summer, like, so what do you do for the rest of the year, right? Good question. And yes, I would definitely go year round. Yay! I'll give everybody a chance to say, see you later, alligator. Fur babies are the best. They're sweet. They're sweet. You know, you know how they take animals into um, senior homes and to put a smile and it's just very therapeutic. I mean, you can't. I mean, they there's been tests that animals are therapeutic to you. And there's nothing better when I go to lay on my bed and a cat jumps up next to me and he turns on his motor. Oh, and you hear that purr, you know, and his fur gets so warm and fuzzy. And it's just the two of you hanging out watching a Netflix show. Ah, oh, that right there is my therapy. <laughs> Painting and Stanley on the bed. That is my therapy. Until tomorrow, my friends. See you, Stacy. See you, Sandy, Jerry, and Chris. You guys have a great day, too. Thank you, Naomi. Sending you love. Chris says, love my dog assistant. Yes, right? <laughs> you are so welcome, Judy. All right, my friends. Over and out till tomorrow. Go do something that you will thank yourself for later. See ya. Bye.